Okay, so as we review our lab on bacteria RK, before we get into the actual lab procedure, let's just make sure we understand some basics about these single-celled organisms. So first of all, they are prokaryotes, or they're made out of prokaryotic cells, right, which means they have no organelles, okay, they're simpler and less complex than eukaryotic cells, but they're still living cells, so they, there are certain components that are found in all cells, right, whether it's prokaryotic or eukaryotic. So what, what would this include? Well, all cells have to have DNA. For prokaryotic cells, the DNA exists as a circular chromosome. Okay, what else? All cells have to have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane that keeps what's inside the cell separate from what's outside. All cells have to have cytoplasm and all cells have to have ribosomes. So ribosomes are not organelles, right? These are the, the protein factories and all cells have to be able to produce proteins so therefore they have to have ribosomes. Now um, prokaryotes divide by a process called by binary fission, okay, and and this is um, that a looks funny, okay. This is a process where essentially you have a parent cell that divides into two, okay, exact copies. So there is no sexual reproduction, technically speaking, right? Now bacterial cells have a way that they can um, transfer genetic material um, and through that process we learned in lecture transformation, transduction, and conjugation um, and so they are able to do that but in cell division alone okay the the two daughter cells would be exact copies of the parent cell. Now let's talk a little bit about um, their how they obtain energy okay so all cells have to have an energy source, okay? So the vast majority of prokaryotes are heterotrophic. They have to obtain their food. They don't make their own food. But there are some that are autotrophic, okay? So the heterotrophic ones obtain their energy source, right, um, externally. Autotrophic, they can be either photo autotrophs, which means just like plants or algae, they harness sunlight, okay, and they are actually able to photosynthesize. The other types of autotrophs are chemo autotrophs. So these are actually using um, chemical substances as their energy form, okay. So let's make a little more room. Now what else should you know? Well, your lab talked about three morphologies or shapes generally of prokaryote or bacterial cells. Okay, so the first we're going to talk about is coccus. Okay, these are spherical cells. Okay, so they can be in chains, right? They can be in clusters. So when you hear of streptococcus, right, staphylococcus, that's describing, the name is describing the, the look of the cell. Okay, they can also be bacillus, which these are long rod-shaped cells, okay, and they can also be in chains, okay, and the third one That's an eye right there. Spirillum. So these are, you know, corkscrew shaped cells. Okay, spiral or corkscrew shaped. Now, most bacteria, right, many, many bacterial cells are actually not harmful. They're helpful. As a matter of fact, in your, as far as cells in and on your body right now, you have about 10 times more bacterial cells than your own cells, and most of them are actually helpful, right? They're keeping harmful bacteria away. We have bacteria that are residing in our um, GI tract that are helping produce vitamins. A lot of them are very helpful. The other 
important thing that your book talked about, your um, lab manual and your and our lecture side too, is nitrogen fixation. So there is the majority of gases, uh, the, the, the gas that's in the highest percentage in the air is nitrogen gas, but it's not, that form is not usable by plants or other, many other organisms. So bacteria are able to fix this form of nitrogen, okay? By fix, I mean they turn it into a usable form. Okay, it might be a nitrate or ammonia. Okay, and these forms plants are able to take up in the soil. So if you think about if you've ever bought fertilizer or plant food, um, it probably had one of these components in it because it's a limiting ingredient in the soil for plants. So nitrogen fixation is an important role that bacteria play in, in all food chains. Now also, they play a role in our food production directly. So if you eat yogurt or cheese, Okay, these these are these um, dairy products are produced by a specific bacterial species. Okay, one of those that you probably have heard about on the commercials, right? That's supposed to be here. We go. Sorry, I can't talk and um, spell at the same time. Lactobacillus. Bulgaricus. Okay, so we're going to underline that because that's the scientific name. So that's a specific um, species of bacteria that helps in the fermentation process to produce yogurt and some cheeses. All right, so now let's talk about your procedure. Okay, so you had, at the beginning, you had four Petri dishes. Okay. And you had something called auger, actually nutrient auger, okay? And the reason it's called nutrient auger is it does have nutrients for bacterial cells to, to use as their energy source, okay? Because remember, most of them are heterotrophic, so they have to obtain their energy. So you microwaved your auger, um, which by the way, just make a note that this auger right here, the actual material is from an algae. Okay, so when we talk about the algae lab, or, or the pro protist lab, we'll talk about this, that, that auger is actually, um, comes from um, an algae. But you took your nutrient auger, okay, you poured it in each of the petri dishes so that you had um, a surface that had nutrition for the bacterial samples to grow. Then you went around your house and you found some areas, okay, that you thought you would swab, and then you took a Q-tip and you just ran the Q-tip right over the surface of the auger plates. Okay, so that line it just represents where your where your Q-tip swab was at. Okay, then you waited a few days. Um, I'm sorry, this last one. Whoops, this should have been the control. So we didn't swab it. Okay, let me erase that. So this would have been the negative control. You did not swab it. Instead, you you didn't put anything on it, but you treated it like the rest of them to see, right? Hopefully you had no growth. So at the end of the several days, you were looking for bacterial growth or colonies that appeared on your Petri dishes, on your nutrient auger. Now, most of you had no trouble, right, growing bacteria. Now, some of you actually grew um, some fungus also, so if it kind of looked a little bit fuzzy or like something you would see on your bread, you probably had some fungal growth in there also. But once you had bacterial growth on the plates, okay, you were to pick one of them that had the most growth, okay? So let's say this particular plate had the most growth. So let's just pick a different color to show growth. Okay, so let's say, you know, you had a little growth here, you had some growth here, you had a little colony here. Okay, you probably had, you probably didn't have an entire surface of bacteria. You probably had some, some areas, right, where you had some growth. So what you were asked to do was to take some antibiotic discs and place them where you saw growth. So if we had a significant amount of growth here, okay, here, Ideally, right, you would have a good 
amount of growth over the whole plate. But at least from the pictures I saw, many of you had sort of some isolated colonies. But let's say all of this represents growth. Okay, if you put your antibiotic disc, antibi one of your antibiotic discs right on the growth, so let's say your disc went here, then you were to wait several days. Okay, what you should have seen if, if those bacterial cells were susceptible to that antibiotic is around the antibiotic disc you would see an area where the bacterial cells were dying, right? We call that a zone of resistance. So if at the end of three days around that antibiotic, resi uh, excuse me, antibiotic disc, if you had an area like this where there was no growth, then that would be considered the zone of resistance. Obviously, the larger the zone of resistance, right, the more effective that antibiotic was in that particular bacterial species. So you measured that to determine which was, which was the most effective antibiotic, okay? So I hope that that was helpful.